Thank you, everybody, for whoa, for showing up. Um, this is an absurdly big crowd. I was not expecting it, so thank you all for coming. Um, so let's get started. My talk uh, is NextGen Argo. It's all about config management plugins and some recent improvements we've made to them. Um, so before I even get started, I kind of want to get a feel for how many people here have used a config management plugin in Argo CD? A few people. How many people use one that is not like open source? You use one just for your company. Okay, so a few people. All right, because uh, I want y'all's feedback on what I'm about to show you. Um, so first, I'm Michael Crenshaw. I work at Intuit. Uh, I'm on our Argo CD team. Intuit runs about 40 Argo CD instances and about 20,000 applications. So my team is responsible for keeping that up and running uh, for all of Intuit. Um, my coworker, Sindhu, couldn't be here to present in person, uh, but she develops the stuff that I'm about to show you um, to a great extent, and I'm gonna have a demo video from her uh, after I do some introductory work. So first, uh, most people probably know this, but just to contextualize the component that I'm gonna talk about in Argo CD, I wanna give a quick overview of what it is, what it does. So it has three basic jobs, uh, pull sources from something like Git or a Helm repository, two, transform those files into manifests, and then three, apply those manifests to Kubernetes. Um, the part that I'm gonna focus on is called repo server, and that's a pod that runs with Argo CD. It does those first two jobs, pull sources and then transforms them. Um, and it has some built-in functionality, like Costas was just talking about to use Customizer Helm to transform sources, but that's not always enough for everybody. So it has a system to talk to a sidecar uh, and that sidecar presents a service which can transform manifests that can then go to uh, Kubernetes. Why would anyone want to use a CMP? So that's config management plugin, and I'll probably just refer to them as plugins most of the time. Um, the first main reason people will use them is to use an unsupported tool. So out of the box, Argo CD will let you use Helm, customize JSON it, or just plain old manifest files. If you want to use something like Grafana Tonka or YTT uh, and Carvel, then you might want to use a plugin for that. That's how you'd add support. Second reason is maybe um, one of the built-in tools doesn't support the feature that you want uh, within Argo CD. Uh, so things like Helm plugins or like Customize 5.0 just came out, and I know there's some things in that that we don't yet integrate with. Maybe you need that now, so you write a plug-in to enable that feature for your, uh, for your organization. And then finally, a lot of folks find it useful to do post-processing on uh, manifests. So common one is injecting secrets. I've seen people actually trigger side effects. So whenever uh, manifests are rendered, they wanna trigger some other job for whatever reason. Um, plugins are a good place where you can hook in and do that. Uh, so the problem that we wanted to solve with plugins is that the UI isn't super rich. So if you've used Argo CD with Helm, um, what you're gonna be used to is not this, this is the plugin interface, but what's on the right? You get rich integrations, you can set uh, values files, set parameters, they're all laid out for you and the user doesn't have to go hunt things down in order to know how to configure um, Helm. On the other hand, the CMP UI, up until um, version 2.7, you could set environment variables, which we get passed to the plugin, but that's it. Uh, it's not communicated up to the user what environment variables the plugin expects or anything like that. You just have to know. So what we're trying to get to is what's on the left. Um, so before I explain how we've gone about parameterizing um, plugins, I wanna tell you basically how you install one, and it's pretty simple. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got a config file, and it sets the plugin's name to my plugin. Uh, it sets up a shell script, and this one's really simple. It just spits out a config map, and you can see it's got some environment variables interpolated in it. Um, and then on the right side, after you've configured your plugin, uh, you install that on a sidecar with an Argo CD binary, and it, it fires up and runs that config. On the right side, you actually use the plugin. Um, you can set the plugin name and then pass it an environment variable. And we prefix annotation there with Argo CD ENV for security purposes, keep people from just setting arbitrary environment variables. But that's how the communication occurs. 
so uh, this talk is all about the bottom block of this new config on the left. So same deal, it just spits out a config map, but now we've created what we call a parameter announcement. And this is just telling the user we have a parameter called my param name, um, and we can give it a more human-friendly title. We're telling the user and the user interface this is a parameter that we accept. And you can see it's a slightly different environment variable that gets generated to actually use that in the plugin. Um, but same basic concept. And on the right is what your user will now see. They get the nice, long, human-friendly explanation of here's what this parameter is for, uh, and then the user can edit it. You see the little puzzle piece icon. That's just telling the user this is something that the plugin advertises that it accepts. Uh, if a user manually edits the manifest, they can add whatever parameter that they want, but this one is explicitly supported by the plugin. And that's what it looks like uh, when you edit in the interface and then click to the manifest tab. What actually gets persisted to the application resource um, is that parameters block, and it sets the name, the, the more machine-friendly name, and then the string value that the user wants. So what I've shown you is just like the read-only view, and what Sindhu wrote up was the write support. And I know it's a little harder to focus in a, in a video, but I think the edit support for the UI is pretty impressive, so, so hang with me, and I think you'll really like this. This is Sindhu. Today I will be discussing on the topic UI changes related to CMP parameters. So right now on the screen you see the plugin.yaml file which is of the type config management plugin. Um, so the main point of interest would be the parameter section. So you can see a list of parameters uh, present in the parameter tab. The string param, array param and the map param and generally CMP accepts the collection type string, array, and map. So I have an example for uh, the three of the collection types. Uh, so I already have applied this manifest file. So now let's get into the Orgo CD UI to see um, the CMP parameters. So now go to the, I have selected the application plugin. So now I'm going to app details and in, under the app details, you have the parameters. So right now, all the parameters that are part of the application, uh, that are part of the CMP manifest are displayed here. So you can see the string param of type string has value value, array param of type array has a list of values, and map param of type map has a list of key value pairs. And the icon, the puzzle icon says that this parameter has been populated by the CMP plugin. So this parameter is coming, this parameter and its value is coming from the CMP plugin. Uh, you can see that all for all the parameters, it's the same uh, description that it provides. So the values and the parameters are coming from the CMP uh, manifest. Uh, okay, so now let's um, see what all actions we can do uh, on the CMP parameters. So right now when I click on the edit, you can see um, the parameters in the edit mode. So you can overwrite the values, you can add new values, you can delete values. So for example, for string param, I can overwrite the value to values. For array param, I can delete the value. For map param might be, I can add a new key value pair. Okay, so, uh, Right now, you can see that uh, the values of these three parameters are overridden at the application level. So our application is the plugin. So we are overriding these parameters at the application level. So now these overridden parameters are stored as part of the application manifest. So right now, uh, even before sa uh, uh, saving this, I will cancel this and now you can see this is the application manifest and you no longer see any parameters here. So now if I go into the edit mode, okay, and now if I make some changes here, um, value three, and for example, if I delete this key to value two, okay, and now I save. So these three parameters are, have got overridden at the application level. So these three pa parameters are stored 
as part of the application manifest. Okay, you can see that the change is being reflected in the parameters section. So all the new values showing up, overridden value showing up and the deleted value being removed. So now if you go to the manifest, you can see all the parameters which have got overridden are displayed as part of the parameters in application manifest. You can see the string param, the value for array param, what are the values and for the map param you can see. So, so now if you go to the same icon, it gives us uh, info saying that this parameter has been provided by the plugin. So if the parameter name is coming from the CMP plugin, but it, its value has been overridden in the application manifest. You can see that, but it is overridden in the application manifest. The same goes here. The same goes here. And the other option that we are providing here is, for example, the user doesn't want to override the values, but he wants to use the values coming from the CMP. So he can just do the reset. It goes back to the uh, CMP value. For example, even for map param, if I do, you can see those two key value pairs being uh, popped up. Um, so now since this string param and map param have been resetted to the values in CMP ma manifest, so these two parameters are no longer part of the application manifest. Only array param is part of the application manifest. So when I save this one, uh, you can see that in the manifest only array param. No longer the string param and map param are value or parameters of uh, uh, application manifest. Okay. okay, so the another, another one, uh, what I want to show is you can add new parameters in the application manifest. Okay, so now let's take this. I will take the same example here. And now I go and I add the value. Okay, uh, let's rename to array param1 and let's delete this value 3. Okay, now I save this. Um, now you can see the same parameter being shown in the parameter section. So array param1 which has value 1 and value 2. So when I go into the edit mode, this so the same type of actions can be done on this parameter as well. Like you can delete this value, you can overwrite the values, you can add new values. Okay. And the other option that is present for this param. So this parameter array param1 is not part of the CMP manifest. It's It has been introduced at the application manifest. So, um, so it doesn't have anything to reset back to. So the only option that is available for this for the user is he can like the user can delete this parameter so when i click on delete this entire parameter gets removed so and it no longer is seen on the parameters ui or in the manifest ui so if you go here and now if you check this under the manifest you don't see array param1 anymore so that that is a one and so since the string param and map param have been resetted back, you can see the uh, this uh, puzzle icon saying that this parameter is provided by the plugin and this parameter is provided by the plugin. But for the array param, it says that it has been overridden at the application manifest. Okay. Uh, so yeah, these are all the uh, so these are all the changes that I wanted to show from the CMP. Uh, on the CMP side and uh, this concludes my demo and uh, thank you all. Uh, in case of any questions, Michael would be happy to help. Uh, thank you. Cool, so hopefully it's clear that the user interface is pretty powerful. Like the examples here are just examples, but I think you can see that if you're trying to present a config management plugin to your users, this is gonna give you the tools you need to let them uh, give you the information you need and, and present to them what they can give you. Um, not play, I need to go to next. Slide. This is cool. 
so what we've seen so far are all static parameter announcements. So say your plugin, you know you need three things uh, that the plugin is always going to accept. Um, sometimes you're not going to know until you're looking at a specific repository what parameters that uh, plugin is going to need. So this is kind of dense. This is a lot of code, so let me summarize it. Um, this code looks at a Helm file repository, uh, Helm file just being another tool that's sort of built on top of Helm, um, and it finds out what parameters does the top level Helm file accept, and then it loops over the dependencies of that Helm file and says, okay, what parameters do those Helm files accept? Uh, and it spits all that out in a JSON document, so a JSON form of a, a um, parameter announcement, and inside of your config management plugin, you just change the parameters block to instead of having a static list, you call a dynamic command and you just call this script. So what that script is expected to write is what you see on the right side, um, a JSON blob with objects and each object describes a parameter. Uh, and on the left side, I just have the struct for the object so you can see what kind of fields it accepts. It accepts a lot more things than we've looked at here, so there are a few more features that we aren't yet taking advantage of. Um, but uh, that's the basic structure that you need to send. And now, so the user interface um, that we're trying to get to this sort of Helm look, so everything we're doing here is kind of informed by the idea that someday we want to be able to build our Helm support as a CMP. Uh, whether we switch over that completely or not is a future question, but there are reasons why you might want to use the CMP um, from security, isolation, uh, we're just dog fooding our own plugin feature um, to support Helm. So on the left side is what I would sort of envision a Helm CMP looking like. And you can compare it to the right side. It's basically the same experience. You can accomplish all the same tasks. And in the manifest um, on the left, that's how you'd configure your Helm, uh, your Helm chart uh, using a CMP. Compare it to the right, which is how people do it with built-in Helm support today. Functionally the same, I honestly kind of like the map better than the list of key value pairs. Um, so we've talked about how you get a user to set a parameter, but we haven't talked much about how your plugin actually uses it. So we wanted to make this as easy as possible for someone who's just writing, say, a bash script uh, to use these parameters. So there's an algorithm that converts uh, the name of your parameter, and suppose if it's a map parameter, the names of the sub keys, into environment variables in a predictable way. Um, and the algorithm's simple, we just uppercase everything, replace everything that's not alphanumeric with an underscore. Uh, so helm parameter dot uh, autoscaling dot enabled becomes param um, helm parameters autoscaling enabled. Uh, that's one way to use it. And that's the best way to use it. If you've got a simple CMP, it just accepts a few, a few parameters, that's great. If you need a little bit more power, we also just have an environment variable that passes you the whole JSON object of all the parameters that the user has set. And you might loop over that to construct a list of, say, Helm flags that you use in the shell, um, or just however you want to use those parameters. Uh, just as sort of a proof of concept, um, a super popular uh, Argo CD plugin is the Vault plugin. I went and looked at their documentation, all the parameters that they accept, and then I wrote a, a quick script to present that in the user interface. Because they accept about 20 parameters, and the only way to use them now is to have their docs on the right and Argo CD on the left, and copy and paste the environment variable name. That's not great if your user just wants to get their app up and running. Um, so I'm gonna open a PR, I've got the code written up to add this to Argo CD Vault plugin, and I hope other plugins kind of follow suit and add support for this as well. Uh, and to wrap it up, so, for the future of config management plugins, I envision a few things changing. Um, the UI is already really, really good. I wanna add support for things like required fields or check boxes and number fields to make it even more intuitive for the users. Uh, I'd really love, like I say, to have Helm or JSON at support as a CMP. Uh, I think that plugins are gonna be the future of how Argo CD generates manifests because they do bring so many advantages. Um, and also, I just wanna see more plugins. Uh, on the right side, by far, the three most popular plugins um, add Vault support, add Helm file support, and Argo CD Lovely plugin is something kind of funny and cool. Uh, it's focused on combining Helm and customized support. 
It also provides a way to chain plugins. So people, long story short, people are doing really cool things. Um, so give those a check and talk to me if you've uh, started writing another plugin or thinking about open sourcing one. I'd love to hear about it and about how parameters um, can serve those use cases. And finally, uh, this is an Argo survey that we're running right now to better understand how users use all the Argo pro products, not just CD. Like, we got to the parameterization project because we heard that users needed it. So this is the best way to communicate to us, besides just talking to us in the hall, uh, what you need in these products and so that we can prioritize them and work on them. Um, but that's my talk. Thank you again all for coming. Uh, and questions. <laughs> Raymond, of course. I know you use the Vault plugin. Hopefully you'll like my PR. Hey, Michael. Uh, so I am using the Argo CD Vault plugin with Helm and other things. Um, one of the things I've seen is I have a Helm args um, parameter which becomes a very large string. Is there like a way to render that in the UI a little nicer? Do I just add like new lines or do I need to put in a PR? You might try to use an array parameter. Uh, that way your user can just hit a plus button and then add hyphen hyphen whatever you need. Mm -hmm. um, it may be a little bit awkward because like you may need hyphen hyphen flag name and then another box under it to have the actual value for that flag but it's still a, better, still a little bit better than just a really long uh, string. You could also use a map for key value pairs. Okay. Thanks. More questions? Yeah, we went, we went really generic with the UI on purpose so you can accomplish those things. It may not be perfectly pretty for each use case, but hopefully it at least covers it. Um, never use CMPs, uh, but uh, so I have a more general question about CMPs themselves. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's interesting for you. Um, if CMPs actually, uh, let's say, extend or change in any way the manifest that I have in Git, doesn't that bring up the problem that now I have something in Git that's actually very different than what ends up being deployed? Yes, so uh, I think that doing mine and Costas's talk in the opposite direction may have actually really helped because yes, um, plugins often pull in like additional sources of truth like Vault. Uh, they may do heavy, heavy transformations on the files in order to get something um, that you then produce as manifests. But I think that's okay if you do kind of what Costas was talking about which is as part of your PR process, call the Argo CD API, ask for a diff of just the source files, it'll call the plugin for you. It'll generate the manifest for you, and then you can comment that back on the PR as a diff and see, okay, what is, what is the plugin actually gonna do and what is actually gonna get applied to my cluster? Um, I actually wrote an Argo Workflows plugin to do diffs, because I really like Argo Workflows for CI. I think it's a CI tool, please use it as CI. Uh, but I wrote a plugin um, that does exactly that. Thank you. Uh, one question for you that I actually have th thinking about this is um, we've been talking about adding OCI support in Argo CD to have like our OCI as a source of truth. Uh, I think you could potentially check out OCI, you know, packages with this. Um, but do you, do you think that that's the right place for these to take place or do you think that there's going to need to be some separate I service changes? I think other work has to happen. I was a little bit misleading on this slide. So repo server does pull sources and transform sources. Plugins have nothing to do with pulling sources. Technically you can, like you can add credentials on your plugin sidecar and pull from wherever you want. But it's not really designed as a fetching tool. It's designed as a rendering tool. I would love to build a system for Argo CD to support arbitrary sources as sort of plugins. Um, and you could hack it in right now, but that's, that's not the direction I would go as sort of a first pass at that feature. Excellent, thank you. Uh, other questions? We have time for one or two more. 
Sorry, I'm not into. Sorry, my name is Belinda. I'm not into the CMPs or plugins, uh, but we use Argo CD. Uh, my question is: Is the plugin architecture easy to uh, uh, write plugins in any language, or is it GoLang, or is it, what, what? What's the interface kind of uh, uh, for, for the plugins to be, you know, written and tested and working? And yeah, it's completely language agnostic. You pass in a command. A lot of people use shell scripts. Um, Technically, we have a thin wrapper around those shell scripts, which is a gRPC service. Technically, you could write your own gRPC service and put it on the sidecar in whatever language you want, just as long as it implements the API that Argo CD expects. No one's really done that yet. Maybe if someone really needs high performance, they'll do it. Um, most folks are just happy with the command. But yeah, whatever language you want, just as long as it spits out YAML or JSON Kubernetes manifests. Ooh, oh, we got more. Looks like we have two more here. Okay. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're, we're good. We can okay. do these. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my question is how the CMP plugins work with uh, multi source applications? They don't. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> so, when we wrote multi source uh, apps, we, we really wanted to solve one very specific use case, which is people want to put their Helm values file in a Git repo and use a public. Helm repository for the chart itself. Um, we got support in for that because we knew we needed it. Uh, someone, Gergay, and I'm, I don't remember his last name, but someone has put up a PR to basically allow different sources to access arbitrary files from other sources. I think it's a good PR. It would enable you to use, say, a plugin that calls Helm to use an external values file. Um, it's a big PR, and it's going to take a while to review, and I'm going to need some help from the other maintainers. But we do, we do want to move that direction and support that use case, yeah. Hi, I'm Felix. Thanks. Uh, quick question. Is there a good place to go to online where I can see all the kinds of uh, Argo CD plugins people have developed so far? Uh, we don't have a list right now. I've thought about adding one to uh, Terry's um, from Acuity's awesome Argo list, which is pretty sweet. Uh, there are four that I really know about, and three of them were listed on that last slide. Um, the extra one is uh, someone named Luke Juggery wrote another Helm file plugin, um, and there's sort of that one, and then Travis's Helm file plugin. There just aren't a lot in the open source world right now, and hopefully like features like this are going to change that. And if you know of others, please tell me where they are, because I, I want to create a list. Yep. Uh, another question about the uh, plugin. Uh, what's the best way of handling errors in the plugin? Of, um, uh, show them in a good way for the end user. Yeah, so, so do you need to shield them for security purposes or just like give something friendly to the user? Currently we have a make file plugin and when it's failed it's very crazy output that doesn't say the end user anything. So sure. we are trying to improve it. So if the command exits with a non-zero exit code, we send them the standard error, and we also log the standard error. So some, something sent to standard error should work then? Yeah, if you just pipe something to standard error, mm -hmm. whatever you want the user to see. Um, and you could also potentially like write some logs to disk if there's something sensitive that you don't want to go back to the user. Yeah, but those are removed in the sidecar when the next run comes. So it's hard to get. Sure, yeah. yeah. You, it's you hard to debug it that way. But it would yeah. have been super if it was a way to do it. Probably, um, I've got to think about how we could enable. Basically, you want your debug logs and you want something that actually goes to the user. We could definitely build a mechanism for that. Uh, nothing really occurs to me at the moment that would be super easy. But that makes a lot of sense. And I don't think it'd be that hard to implement once we had the idea. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Thank you all.